on. And I want to ask Stone Grissom, who's our guest here in the Core TV studio, what's the defense proving here? Well, I think what they're establishing here is that uh, Mr. Morangello was not a violent person, that he and Fern had a very good relationship. Um, again, they're establishing the fact that Fern was not the mother of these two children, of, of Mr. Morangello's children. Um, they, he's established that Doug has been around that residence lots of times. He said that he's known him a hundred times. Uh, he's seen him a hundred times. He could only have seen him near that residence. Now, there's one thing, another thing that they brought out that I think uh, probably they should not have been permitted to bring out, but you have very adroit questioning here, and that is that after Fern was, was no longer around, right. he uh, didn't seem concerned. He uh, probably assumed that she would, had left in a snit, which she had done before in the past. Right. And, but in a sense, he is simply repeating uh, Don Morangello's cover story. If, if, it is, if he's the killer and it is a cover story, right. he told the same thing to his friend as he did later to the police. Makes sense. Any good defense, you have a theme and you need to pepper that theme throughout the entire trial and that's what they're doing with each of these witnesses. They're establishing and reiterating the exact same thing. Mr. Morangello was concerned about the fact that his wife was missing, but he wasn't, he wasn't acting cagey. He wasn't acting like someone had just killed her. Um, he was acting like someone who, had, this had happened before. Uh, and okay. so somewhat appropriate for the circumstances. All right, we'll go back into the courtroom. And they appear to be moving toward the conclusion of the defense. You know, if that's true, and what we hear is that the judge has said he wants to have the testimony over so they can have closing arguments tomorrow, mm -hmm. well, you can just assume we will not hear from Don Morangello. Now, he testified in the previous trial and did pretty well. It was hung jury of six people, only one for conviction, five for acquittal. Right. Why do you think he's not testifying this time? Well, it's, it's tough when you have a retrial and your client has already testified because you, the, the, the surprise and the sting of his own testimony. Usually prosecutors, because of your right to remain silent, prosecutors don't get a chance to really judge your demeanor, your, your full testimony unless you've made statements to the police until you actually take the stand. In this case, they've pretty much gotten a, a, a free deposition on their side. So if he deviates in any way from the the first bit of testimony, they get to impeach him on that. Plus, it's been a couple of years. He may not have the same emotional effect or, or affect that he would have uh, the first time he testified with regard to his wife. Uh, and, and that, he, I mean, he did a very good job the first time, so I'm, I'm sure that was a, a tough decision to make. You know, it seems to me that the prosecution so far uh, is not keeping the focus, its focus, mm -hmm. on, uh, well, for instance, he, he's asked, they were asking this last witness, who is obviously a very friendly witness to the defendant. And he was saying that uh, he was in the home there uh, shortly after this murder allegedly took place in the home and saw no signs of it. And it seems to me that what the prosecution failed to do was to point out with its timeline uh, the story that Don Morangello told the police and told this witness, his friend, that his wife left mm -hmm. and he didn't know where she went, doesn't hold water because the, uh, the, her body was found I mean, he, he has to argue that she left and then he went to Connecticut and she came back and somebody, possibly his son Doug, killed her. Right. Well, what we know is that her body was found floating in the bay at about the time Don Morangello went to Connecticut. So he couldn't have gone away and she came back and been killed. Right. The biggest piece of evidence for the prosecution is the fact that the coroner places the time of death or the fact that she's been in the water about the time that Mr. Morangello, Don Morangello, claimed that they had a fight. The biggest problem in this case, uh, from my, my perspective, is that the prosecution has allowed itself to get caught up in the minutiae of the defense. And, and they've, yeah. in the like essence... where did, did it... Was she killed in the house? Was it the bedroom? Was it the sunroom? If, if he killed her, he's guilty. Right, exactly. Whether he killed her in the house or somewhere else. But every witness you saw in the state's case, every single witness yeah. was almost put on the defensive by the defense right off the bat. I mean, they, they, they established that Doug could have had access to that house, um, that he was a heroin addict. I mean, the very first two witnesses from the prosecution allowed the defense to get all that in and gain momentum and, of the trial. And by the way, if our uh, viewers didn't pick up on Doug, the son who is now deceased and was right. a heroin addict, was right. a big man, almost 250 pounds, six feet tall. He could have lifted the body, this is the implication, right. he could have killed her and would have had the strength 
to take her out and put her in the boat and take her out. With the cinder blocks. Also, yeah. the trajectory of the bullets, according to the forensic yeah. uh, coroner, is that she was shot at somewhat of a downward Slightly angle. Down. And, and, and Don Morangello is about uh, five, eight or nine. Right, and she's, I think, yeah. an inch shorter than him. Yeah. But uh, Doug Morangello is six feet tall, yeah. so you, that you, you can get that downward angle, and I think that's what the defense is going for. And, and again, the prosecution has allowed itself to get caught up in these little nitpicky arguments by the defense. And, and That's the name of the game if you're a defense counsel. Absolutely, counsel. it's a very good defense right now. Now, I was persuaded that Doug Morangello genuinely wondered who killed his his stepmother. Uh, that's partially true. It's also true that they weren't able to take a statement from him because he, he lawyered, he got some advice from a lawyer not to give, uh, cooperate with the police. Uh, and then he, he died uh, unexpectedly. So some of that is out of the control of the police officers. They, they couldn't fully investigate him. But I think it's a fair argument to make from the defense to say you listen to some tapes between he and the defendant. If he is covering his own tracks, he might even sound genuine. You don't know this person. Um, you should have followed up. Yeah. You should have gone and, and investigated him further. I think it's a fair argument to make, but uh, on, on both sides. Now, the police were also persuaded that in those taped conversations, the father, Don, who mm -hmm. is the defendant, says, you know, uh, I had a gun once, but Fern threw it in the bay, it threw it in the, in the ocean, right. and it's been gone, and uh, so that the son believe, did not know that there was a gun and would not have known that if he wanted to kill her, he could go in the house, use this gun, and get rid of it. You know, that, that's, that's a tough thing to get over. Um, but both of those statements could be true. I mean, he could have been told by Fern. Um, we've, we've heard that Fern is, is somewhat of an aggressive, outgoing personality. She could have told him. They could have had an argument. She could have, in the heat of the moment, said, I'm just throwing this gun into the bay to the Gulf of Mexico, and then not have actually yeah. done that and saved the gun. Didn't tell him that she saved it, and he and, believed it. And, and at least it's consistent with one thread of the defense, and that is that this guy, Don Morangello, is a smart man. He's an uh, aeronautical engineer. He's, he's very uh, disciplined. Mm -hmm. And that he is too smart to do all the dumb things that he would have done if he killed his own wife and threw the gun and the body right off the backyard yeah, that is the, into the bay. That is the best piece of uh, defense uh, yeah. in this case, is that he's, he's smart in one aspect but really stupid in the other aspect. And I don't think that, I mean, yeah, those and two that's what the prosecution has to say. Here's a 